truck just drove by, uh, U.S. Forest Service. Yeah, they just asked, uh, hey, you know, where are you going? And I said, Canada. <laughs> and of course, it always spawns a bunch of questions, but uh, I love the reaction you get. Here we go, there's a nice prime piece of real estate right here. It's a fixer upper. It's still better than some of the homes in Detroit. So my last video ended with me hiking out of Burrow Mountain Homestead and I ended up hiking down Tyrone Road a couple of miles down to Highway 90 and then I got a hitch into Silver City. That way I could catch um, the main parts of trail days. Otherwise uh, it was a 12 and a half mile walk into town. Would have got there late in the afternoon and yeah I just wanted to kind of enjoy it. So I hitched back out to the place I left off on Highway 90, walked through all of Silver City. I'll spare you the details. It was pretty boring road walk but I will say I did pass a pretty interesting house the guy's driveway was just lined with these toilets I mean can you imagine having this guy for a neighbor but now I'm back in the woods and on a nice trail This is a registry with a clever name, Regis Tree. <laughs> and I didn't really understand the importance of these before I got on trail, but they're actually pretty cool. Um, you'll find them at trailheads and hotels and restaurants, post offices, things like that, um, in a lot of the hiker friendly towns here. And their purpose is you can kind of see who's ahead of you and at what date they arrived. So that's pretty helpful if you're trying to catch up to a friend or something like that. So Silver City was actually pretty fun. Um, you don't really, well, I haven't seen a lot of people on trail anyway, at least not in this last section. I ran into one guy just uh, right around the Burrow Mountain homestead named Cracker. We talked for about a minute, that was it. Um, so yeah, actually having human interaction in town is, is actually pretty nice. But one other, one other funny thing about Silver City, I was walking down the street and I see this uh, guitar store. I'm like, oh cool, guitars. Oh, I should go in there and you know just jam out, that'd be fun. And then I look down and there's all sorts of mattresses in there. I'm like, what the hell? And I look up at the sign and it says, bedroom and guitar shop. Yeah, bedroom and guitar shop. So I just love those combination businesses like that. They always crack me up, you know, like get a cheeseburger while you get a haircut or something. This is Sheep Corral Canyon, and I'm about, I don't know, five or six miles now from the Gila River. And pretty much every CDT hiker, I think, takes the Gila River alternate. Uh, the actual CDT follows the Black Range east of here. It's a little bit longer. It's really dry. It's up in the mountains and on some hills and stuff. Whereas the alternate route that I'm on right now follows the Gila River and then the Middle Fork Gila River for something like 50 miles. And it's supposed to be the highlight of New Mexico and one of the highlights of the entire CDT so I really can't think of any good reason not to do this route but with that said I wouldn't mind seeing the Black Range in the future. Wow I think these are some of the best views along trail yet. This is the Gila River, and tomorrow, uh, basically going to be walking through the river all day to Doc Campbell's. And I got my campsite set up right here. And 
today uh, there should be about 50 or more crossings. This year it's a really, uh, it's you know, the river's really low. They've been really dry. Bad for fires, good for river crossings. So it's time to get my feet wet. All right, one down, way more than 50 to go. <laughs> well, check it out, there's some small caves. There's actually been a bunch in this area. Starting to get a couple sprinkles already. Hope it doesn't amount to much more because I don't have a rain jacket. I don't have a rain cover for my backpack and I don't have a compactor bag for the inside of my backpack. I sent all that stuff to Doc Campbell's because I just assumed being in the desert, it wasn't gonna rain, which it didn't. But I do have one garbage bag to keep my sleeping bag and some other important items dry. Once you get your feet wet the first time, it's really not that bad. It's kind of a mind over matter thing. that I was always drawn to about hiking is just how much it forces you to live in the moment you know like back in the real world your head's always just wandering about you know all the things you got going on in your life but out here you know most of that just melts away you're really only thinking about today and and really just right now crossing this river getting to lunch you know by the end of the day you're so tired you know sleep comes easy and, and life is good you know it's a, it's a simple way to live but it's really, really satisfying. Today is cold. It's a lot colder than I thought. I stopped for about 10 minutes to eat. By the time I got done eating, I was shivering. It's probably in the 50s today. We've got winds like 35 mile an hour gusts, so it's it's cold. This is just unreal. Well, so far, just about everybody I've talked to on the CDT has hiked either Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, or both. And I've been asked, you know, why did you choose the CDT to do first? And to be honest, uh, the CDT just spoke to me the most out of all the other trails. I never really had a desire to do the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail maybe, uh, but the CDT just had the fewest amount of people on it. And the fact that it was the most rugged, remote, 
hell, it's not even completely blazed all the way, you know? And that's the kind of stuff I'm after, a true wilderness experience. And so far the CDT has definitely lived up to that expectation. Well, I just made it out of the canyon down there with the Gila River, and this is Highway 15, so now I'm just a couple mile road walk away from Doc Campbell's. over here. What kind of goodies? It's Christmas. Yeah. Ooh, I was looking at the steak. Your... You got a rain jacket now. Unless they're just chunks of turquoise in there, but now yeah, they're in turquoise. Where'd you find them? That was in the Eula yesterday? Yeah. That's cool. Did no, you I save it, my friend? The hmm? rock? Nah, I oh. just left it. I was like, I mean, it's a freaking rock. Yeah, right? that's I don't thing. want to carry it. Yeah, like... if it's a smaller one, right? Yeah. I've been trying to collect them as I go, but I, um, you know, it just as long as they're like this big or smaller, you know, I'm not going to take it. I really wanted to snag it. Oh great, more trail mix. I got like a half gallon full of trail mix that I made in the beginning that I oh, haven't yeah. touched because I already got sick of it. This is the Gila Hot Springs campground right next to Doc Campbell's. I'm gonna stay here tonight and take a zero day tomorrow and just kinda hang out and soak in the hot springs. What could be better than that? <laughs> 